Hello, everybody. I'm here again. I have Kayla here. Um, Kayla is tuning in from New York, um, and she's just going to share, you know, why she got started and some tips to share with everybody. So I guess we'll start um, with Kayla. What, um, what would you say your why is why you got started online? Yeah, definitely. This one is a little bit of a loaded question, and there's a lot of different layers for this, especially for me. Um, I know we all have our own stories, we all have our own backgrounds, and um, there's a lot of different reasons and different things that kind of led me to this. Um, and I'll start with the fact that I, I used to work a job. Um, I was a manager at a spa. And, well, actually, let me back up. I I'll start with, um, you know, in high school, I was always, you have to go to college, you have to get good grades, you have to, like, that's how you're going to be successful. And I come from a family where my mom's the only one in the entire family that's ever gone to college, and she got her associate's degree. So ever since I was little, it was Kayla's going to be the one that's going to go to college. Kayla's going to be the one and blah, 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 blah. And it was just college was 100%, no other option. Like, that's what I was doing. I went to college for a doctorate program in physical therapy. So I like really was like, I'm gonna be the first one to get a doctorate degree. Like I can do this. I'm, I, mean, I hated it. I got there and I hated it. I hated everything about it. It just did not feel right. It didn't, nothing was easy. And not, not that things should be easy, but like, I didn't get along with my roommate. I, other stuff in my family stuff was going on and it was just a nightmare. I hated it. So I, I dropped out and that was a huge, like, holy crap. Who am I? Like a, an identity crisis almost. Like I didn't know what I was going to do from that point on, because that was, that was the only plan that I had ever had. So I went drop hopping from different jobs and I was like, you know, I'm a, I'm a hard worker. I can find this success. I can still make this happen somehow. So I kind of like got my toes wet with like the whole entrepreneurship thing. And like, I really loved the gym and I wanted to be a personal trainer and kind of was just like seeing what I could, what I could come up with. And I started working at a spa and I became a manager there and gave it everything. Like I was working 80 to hundred hours a week. And this also kind of like comes into my why with like, I, I had no time or like the ability to prioritize myself. Um, so I was constantly sick. I actually just recently have brought this up to surface and I'm dealing with this now, but I was battling bulimia um, for a really long time and just, I, I wasn't healthy. I was not in a good place mentally or physically, but I was busting my butt to try to make it happen. And then I got pregnant. And my boss literally to my face said, you know what, Kayla, I have no use for you anymore. And there goes my job. So now here I am pregnant at 24 years old with no college degree, no job anymore. I couldn't lift. I couldn't, I had no idea what the heck I was going to do. So I found myself in a position where I, I, we decided as a family that I was going to be a stay at home mom. That made the most sense for us. It didn't make sense for me to go back to a job that was only paying minimum wage. The way that the income worked out, like for paying daycare and stuff like that, it just, it wasn't worth, I didn't have a job worth going back to that was mo worth more than spending that time with our son. So I found myself in that position and that was never anything that I had thought I wanted to do like that was never part of the picture it wasn't really something that I didn't want to do I just had never thought about it I always thought that I was going to be someone with a successful career not a stay-at-home mom so then I had my son I'm like okay well I actually really like this whole stay-at-home mom thing this is really cool I don't want to go back to work I don't and then I'm like remembering all of this stuff of like that I hated about my job, you know, clocking in and clocking out and never being able to eat. I would work 16 hour shifts and not even have a 30 minute lunch break. That's not healthy. That's not okay. And like I said, like, I, I really like the gym. I do bodybuilding. I do powerlifting. That is very important to me. I actually side note prepped for a whole bodybuilding show for like 20 weeks. So like three or four months of like strict diet to the gym every single day, get myself ready for a show. And two weeks before the show, I couldn't compete because my boss needed me the same boss that she needed me so bad that I couldn't compete in something that I worked so hard for, for months. 
that when I got pregnant and I actually needed a job and needed a future, she had no use for me anymore. So that was like a huge where I'm like, I'm never going to put myself in a position again where someone else has that control over me. I know that I'm a hard worker. I know that the way that I show up, but no one else gets that control over me. They don't get the control over my time. They don't get the control over my health. They don't get the control over my mindset. They don't get the control over my income potential. None of it. Like I needed to find a way that I could have control over that. And I also realized that I had to put the time in for my mental health, dealing with this eating disorder, dealing with other childhood traumas that I, I just didn't deal with. Um, I needed to do that. So that way I could be a better person for myself, but also be a better mom and be the mom and the, the person that I actually wanted to be. So I found this opportunity. I was, you know, I was looking for different things that I could do while still staying home with my son, something that I could build and grow and, and do while I'm in this season of my life as a stay at home mom. I, I want something, you know, my son's going to eventually go back to school. He's not going to need me at home every single day. So like, what am I going to have to go back to this? This is what I'm building. And I'm doing that for, for all of those reasons to never have to go back to that place where I was unhealthy and overworked and underappreciated and just miserable and spewing that energy to other people around me to where now I can focus on being the best version of myself and grow something for my son. So that way we can, you know, have our house and I can open my gym and we can travel and he can ex have experiences that aren't just, well, mom's got to work because we got to pay bills. That's not the life that I want. So that was kind of long, but that's kind of wow. my story. That's where I got to this point. And that's why I will never give up or back down on this opportunity because. Wow. I love that. <laughs> like there's, you've covered so much and like, just your story is just like, I don't even have other words, but wow. Like you're an inspiration <laughs> and you're amazing. I mean, that's so cool. I, I never knew that, you know, we've gotten on all these team calls and you never mm -hmm. really know like everyone else's reason for being here. So right. that is awesome. I'm so happy you shared it. Yeah. You know, I know it's probably hard for you to share some of those things. So, you know, you just look Sometimes. back. And, yeah. yeah. I mean, you just look back at your growth, you know, as mm -hmm. a person and, you know, building your brand and, you know, you've come so far. So that is so awesome. I love yeah. that. Thanks. I'm like similar because um, with wanting to start a family, you know, it was always in my head. Whereas when I'm working a job where it's, you know, the income's not really there, why pay for daycare? Because you know, it's outrageous. So why would I work to put my kid in daycare? Like when it's just, you know, equaling it's, out. So you're literally just working to pay for daycare. That, that's exactly. what it would have been for me. If I would have went back full time to a job, I think I would have been making like $2 out of every single hour would have been money that I actually got to bring home. The rest right. of it would have been paying for someone else to watch my son. And that extra $2 an hour, it's an extra $100, $200 a week or whatever that adds up to, that wasn't worth it to us. Right miss that time. And I'll also add that three months after my son was born. So like when I was in all of this, like, what the heck am I going to do? You know, I don't have a job to go back to now I'm a mom and I'm trying to navigate who I am in this season of my life. Um, my 14 year old cousin was actually murdered. He was shot in the head in the streets in Cincinnati, Ohio. And it was super sudden and super tragic. And that like, that was a very line in the sand moment for me where, you know, I'm a new mom, I'm three months postpartum. So I'm still struggling with anxiety and depression. And not only did I lose my cousin, but I just watched my aunt bury her son after only having 14 years, 14 years. And just the thought of possibly only having that much time with my son, I was like, fuck that. I ain't spending one day going somewhere or doing something that I don't want to do. All my time and all my energy goes into him and that family and our family and our memories. And, and that's what's important. And, and I realized that like, when I thought that my job at the spa was so important, you know, I, I sacrificed so much for that job. And for her to just, and, and like that boss to me, was she was a friend. It wasn't just like, a, like I worked there for a couple of years and like I was 
open to close every single day. And like I said, I didn't even compete in a show that I worked for four months for, for her to just wake up and say, eh, I have no use for you anymore. Mm -hmm. I, after all of that, like when my cousin is, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to have anybody else control my time. I want to spend that time with my son because I don't know how much time I have. Wow. Yeah, that is so terrible with your cousin. I'm so sorry to hear that. I can't even imagine. And it's so true. Yeah. I mean, just to think about it's eye opening. The, yeah, it's totally eye opening. You know, we hear crazy stuff like that all the time. And it's like, mm -hmm. you know, like you said, it's not worth giving your time to someone else because, you know, your boss is making a life for herself and she's paying you probably well under what you were worth. Mm -hmm. just to run her business so you know you have to create yeah. that life that you want you know right that's awesome and like I'm all for doing the work I'm all for showing up and and putting work into something but I needed to do it in a way where I had control I couldn't give right. that control to somebody else again yeah absolutely so and through this business <laughs> yeah I was gonna say and through this business you have that you know you're building mm -hmm. your own brand you know, Absolutely. you're clocking in when you want to, and it's total freedom. So yeah, yeah that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the best perks about this business. Mm -hmm. Totally. I agree. Well, mm -hmm. I guess that kind of, you kind of covered the second one, but if there's something, you know, I was going to ask how starting this business has changed your life. Um, I know you touched on some, but if there's something you wanted to add. Yeah, it's kind of just like all of that. It's, it's given me the confidence it's actually given me the opportunity to build the confidence that I needed in myself to there's a saying that um you know a lot of us are stuck in this mindset of once I have this I can do this so I can be this so once I have more time freedom once I have more money then I can do those things with my son and I can take him on vacation so I can be happy and be a good mom that has it backwards. It needs to be switched. Who do I have to be so I can do so I can have? So this business has really forced me to take a look at that and really build those habits and change the person who I am. Because now, you know, the person I was before, I struggled with an eating disorder and I couldn't even ask anybody for help. I, I, I couldn't do that. I couldn't admit it to myself and I couldn't ask anybody else for help. So I've struggled with this behind closed doors for over 10 years. And this business has allowed me to like, take a look at that. Like, so who do I have to be? So that way I can do the tasks that need to be done to grow my business, to build my business, to have that time, to then have that time freedom and have that location freedom and all like the financial freedom, all of that. The person that I need to be is the one that can get up consistently every single morning and show up for me, put myself first, do all of the things that are going to make me feel good to make me feel like a better person so I can show up better for everyone else. And that has been the biggest shift that I think I've learned from this business and that is completely life-changing because I am a completely different person now than I was when I started two years ago and the best thing though is like I know that it's going to be ever-changing I'm going to just keep growing into a better version of myself consistently as I do this because this business forces you to do that so I would say that's probably the biggest way that my life has changed since starting this business. Yeah, I love that. And I can relate so much. I know a lot of people in the business can, I mean, there's so much mindset. Um, oh, yeah. There's so much support, like you're just surrounded by it. Like you said, it forces you to mm -hmm. be that way. You know, you have to challenge yourself to be a better version of yourself. So right. that's totally the same for me. Like I, I feel like I'm a completely different person in the last year because yeah. I worked on myself, I prioritized myself, my goals, like, so doing that, you know, it just like transformed my life. And it sounds like yep. it did yours too. Yeah, yeah that's absolutely. amazing. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, cool. Well, I guess um, my next question would be, um, what would be your favorite part about like um, the platform we work through or just your favorite part of the business? 
Um, so aside from like the personal development and the growth that I have seen and like the flexibility that it does give me, this has allowed me to still be able to stay home and only have to, at this point, I've only had to go back to work part-time as a waitress. So like it's, it's allowed me to not have to go back full-time. Um, so that's really cool. And then honestly, like my favorite part about this specific business blueprint, this platform, and, and what we work with is honestly the flexibility to really make it your own personal brand. Like you really are building your own business and you get to build something that you're passionate about. You get to build something and spread a message that means something to you. And now like I've shared a little bit on here, a little bit about like my eating disorder and some of my childhood trauma. And that's something that is you know, I, for me to kind of heal from that and to kind of get through all of that, I had to have, or there's this quote that kind of gave me a lot of peace with that. And it was, um, you know, I didn't go through what I went through for nothing. So to me, that tells me that like, I, I can build this platform and use my voice to spread the message on how I got through all of that, all of the mindset stuff that did, like, I'm really passionate about teaching other people and giving them the tools to be the strongest version of themselves, both mentally and physically. And if you go and you look at my pages, I have two pages on Instagram, one for the, this business and one for, um, an app that I developed for personal training. And both of those, the messages that you're gonna get and the messages that I screen is to be the best and strongest version of you because that's something that I believe in. And the cool part though is like, whatever your story is, whatever's important to you, that's what you get to build. That's what you get to spread. And, you know, they say there's that saying of like, you know, if you like what you do, you can never work a day in your life, which I only have like, some some truth behind that but like it really is like I don't I love sitting down and getting to work now I love doing it because it really is something that I'm passionate about and that I think is important other people need to hear what I have to say and I can do it in a way where I can also help them and that having that flexibility there to like just really get your voice out there I think that's the coolest the coolest freaking thing ever I love that you touched on so many good things, but that is so true. You know, like if we didn't go through all those things in our past, we wouldn't be where we are today. So that's a hundred percent true. And, you know, being our own brand, we're not pushing a product that we don't even care about or that we don't exactly. believe in, you know, yeah. cause we all know those people that are on Facebook selling things and if I'm probably speaking for most people, but it kind of gets annoying, you know, like you don't want to buy it and you know, you know, they're just trying to sell a product kind of like a salesman. So yeah. the fact that like, we don't have to go through that and we're selling our brand and, you know, we're making it all us. So yeah. yeah. Awesome. It's that flip between product marketing versus lifestyle marketing. And right. this, in this business blueprint, you get to decide how much of each you want to do. And that's going right. to look different for all of us. Um, I mean, seriously, you look at anybody's pages in this business, we all have the same business, right? But we all look completely different. The messages that we're spreading, the pictures that we're spreading, the content that we're putting out there, the people that we're speaking to, the problems that we're speaking on, they're all they're all the same, but they're different because it's, yeah. it's you, you're unique. You are the business. You are the variable here. And I think that is just super, super cool. <laughs> yes, I agree. That is so true. And it's just so unique. You know, mm -hmm. you yeah. get all the training, you get all this provided from, you know, masters and millionaires and they're giving it all to us. And, you know, we're still able to create it the way we want. So yeah. yeah, I love that. Well, I know that when I got started, I was super hesitant and I was worried it was a scam. I, you know, had all these things going through my head. So, you know, with everything, there's going to come hardships, you know, in life, mm -hmm. starting a business, anything. Um, so I would, uh, my last question is what are, were some of your fears, like with taking the leap and getting started and like, how would you say you overcame them? I would say that there's probably two main fears that kind of linked together and that held me back for a little while. Um, and that was one, the fear of like failure, like, can I make this work? And two, the fear of what other people are going to think of me. 
Now, this is where I think it's super freaking cool because in order, like, okay, so like fear of failure. I'm afraid that I'm going to fail. I'm afraid that this isn't going to work for me. I've had to put in a lot of work over mon months of figuring out what am I actually scared of? Why am I afraid to fail? Because it's not, it's not just a simple switch of like, well, I'm just not going to be scared. I'm just going to put the work in and I'm not going to fear failure. You can't, that's not only going to get you so far. The thing that you'll learn the more that you get into like mindset work and stuff like that is there's a subconscious thought that is making me believe that I'm going to fail or that I might fail, or that's making me live in that state of fear. And the biggest thing is like your thoughts and your beliefs translate into the actions that you actually do which give you the results that you want to have. So if I'm coming from a place of, oh, I don't know if I'm going to make this work. I don't know if this is going to work for me. My actions are going to reflect that. And that means that I'm going to still stick to those self-sabotaging cycles, like keep my eating disorder going, even though I know that that's not making me healthy or not showing up in the morning and sticking to my morning routine because eh, I'm a little tired or not going to the gym, even though I know it's going to make me feel better because eh, I'm just not feeling it today. No, I had to go back and like really dig deep. Why am I scared that I'm going to fail? And it's because there's, there was like different things in my life that made me think I was going to, like I dropped out of college and I didn't realize that I had a lot of shame attached to that. I was really embarrassed that I had dropped out of college. So I had to deal with that to kind of, to get rid of that fear. I had to acknowledge that I was scared, first of all, and then acknowledge that like, okay, yes, I did fail and I did drop out of college, but that's nothing to be ashamed about. And that doesn't mean that I'm going to fail this time. That has nothing to do, like there's no connection there. So I kind of had to train my brain to get rid of that and to fully believe a hundred percent that I'm going to make this work for me. There's no question about if it's going to, or if it's not, it's just a matter of when it's going to work for me. And um, what was the other one? Oh, the fear of like what other people think of me. Kind of the same thing. Like, why, why am I scared of that? I really had to dig into that. And like, I've put so much energy and, and validation or like trying to get that validation from other people where in turn of like building these habits to not be scared anymore, to prove that I can keep showing up for myself and to prove that I can do this. That's built that confidence to where like, I know now I've done so much work that like, I know what I stand for. I know what I'm showing up as. I know the energy that I'm giving off and like what I'm trying to get out of this. And I understand and I see the importance of what I'm doing, that it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. Like, and it, and it really doesn't, like, I, it doesn't affect me anymore because I really don't care. I've, I've just really realized that their opinion doesn't affect anything because, you know, and in the beginning of my business, let me tell you, because this was a fear. And I will tell you that when you fear something, whatever energy you're putting out is the energy you're going to get back. So I was scared that people were going to think certain things about me and my business. Well, guess what? I attracted myself a very uncomfortable situation with some people sharing their opinions about me and my business. Hi, bud. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry, my son's here. <laughs> um, so I attracted that, this whole big thing that happened that got really ugly and Mom. it took me, I was really angry Mom. for a long time. I was really mad and sad. Hold on, bud. Mommy's almost done. Okay. Okay. Go right into the bathroom. Okay. Go ahead. You know where it is. You can do it. Um, and it was funny though, because it took a couple weeks, maybe even months. And then all of a sudden I realized, I was like, wait a minute. I just woke up this morning. I got to go to the gym, I'm eating my breakfast, and now I'm sitting on the couch with my son, drinking coffee, laughing, watching cartoons, having a good time. Nobody can take that away from me. Nobody gets to say any, like, it doesn't matter what you say or what you think while you're at your house, you might be angry, you might be thinking that I'm X, Y, Z, and I'm crazy for doing this or whatever. That doesn't change the fact that I'm sitting at home with my son today and not having to go to work. I love so, that. <laughs> yeah. I think just like digging into why, 
Why are you scared? Where is that fear coming from? And that's how you overcome that. Hi, Ben. You went potty? Yay, I'm so proud of you. Sorry, I had to do that. He's so cute. Um, but no, I love, I love all that because, you know, when you were saying your fear is a failure, like we, that is human. Like we face that oh, every absolutely. single day, you know, anything you do, you know, there's going to be failure and that just makes us that much stronger. Um, it's funny. I just posted yesterday on my page. Um, it said, um, you will always pass failure on your way to success. And that's yep. 100%, you know, if this was so easy, everyone would do it. All yeah, of the absolutely. successful people, you know, the millionaires, you know, superstars, you know, they didn't just get there with no work, you know, they- No, and if anybody the- does just get there or like have like all of a sudden the success or something like that, if they're not the person that they have to be, like I said, that be, do, have, they're not going to hold on to that. Right. You know what I mean? They're not yeah, going to keep it there. They're going right. to eventually lose it. And that's why you see like celebrities and stuff that they're all of a sudden like super famous and doing a great job. And the next thing you know, they're in rehab and yeah, bankrupt, through, and, yeah. you know, have yeah. no money. It's because yeah. of what's going on up here. Yeah. A hundred percent. And through this business, like the mindset has just been life changing. And, you know, one of my fears when getting started was the same thing, you know, worried about what people would think and, you know, am I doing the right thing? But when it comes down to it, you know, they're not paying your bills. They're not, you know, living the life that you have, you know, if they want to keep working nine to five, five, six days a week, that's on them, you know, but that's that's not the life that I want, you know, so letting go of people's (laughs) opinions about you is really hard, but you know. I need two seconds. I'm really no, you're, sorry. you're fine. <laughs> I'm there we go all right we just had a little intermission (laughs) um but yeah I love everything you shared sharing your story I hope that it helps someone you know that's on the fence because I know we were all there at some point um but yeah I think this was great is there anything you wanted to add um when you just said like someone being on the fence there it just kind of if if you are on the fence and you are sitting there thinking like what bud Oh, awesome. (laughs) Um, Having those fears of like, is this going to work for me? Is this the right step? Should I be doing this? The fact that you have that gut feeling that it's something that you even want to try or that it's something like, I have chills right now, just even thinking about it. You know, that gut feeling I'm talking about that thing that's telling you jump, jump, jump. Yeah. (laughs) Listen to that. Do that. You might not know the, all the answers now. You might not know, like I literally, when I found this opportunity and my fiance came home from work and I literally told him, like, I really have no idea what this even is. I don't know how it's going to work, but I just have this feeling that it's something I need to do. That's how I decided to start this business. But like, I was already all in before I even knew what any of it was. I just, I had that feeling. Yeah. If you have even a little bit of that feeling, you you know what I'm talking about. You had that feeling yes. too, Curly, didn't you? Yes. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Don't Always let those your fears gut. and those doubts overcome that feeling because it's going to be hard work. It's going to be hard work. I'm not going to tell you that it's not going to be hard work. It's going to be hard because becoming the best version of yourself and becoming the strongest version of yourself, that's hard. It's not easy work, but it's worth it. And if you're, you're looking for that change, you need a little bit of some, like, this is it. Don't sleep on it. And, and like I've said, but like, because of my stuff that's happened in my life, like I will just preach this over and over and over again. Life is too freaking short to be doing anything that you don't want to do. If you are not happy, make a freaking change and do it now. That's 
that yeah. would be my advice. <laughs> I love that. That is so true. I waited when I got started, I waited like three or four months and I was like, mm -hmm. just watching and watching and watching. And then I'm like, all right, I'm just, I have to do it now. All I can think is where would I be if I got started that exactly. much sooner? So yep. Yep. that is so exactly. true. You well, have that feeling and you know, yeah, <laughs> do it. Well, thank you so much for hopping on today. It's been, yeah, absolutely. you know, I'm so excited for everyone to watch this, hopefully learn from it and especially taking time away from your son today. <laughs> He's so cute. Well, thank you. And we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.